The word of wisdom uh, was revelation given by Joseph Smith nearly 200 years ago, which teaches us how to keep ourselves healthy and how to keep our bodies pure. Uh, we don't drink alcohol, we don't drink tea and coffee, uh, we don't smoke cigarettes and we don't partake of illegal substances. Um, and I just think it's amazing how that was given nearly 200 years ago and it's only now that we're really coming to understand the real health ha hazards that come with those things. At the time many people were encouraging people to drink coffee and to say that drinking alcohol was good for you. Uh, and uh, even in the church people were, um, were smoking and using tobacco. Now we didn't know then but we know now just how pernicious tobacco is how addictive it is, and it has shown that the Word of Wisdom really was a Word of Wisdom. Mormons believe that the, uh, the body uh, is sacred, uh, that it's important. Uh, within our church we sometimes refer it to as a, as a temple, which is a building that's very sacred to us, um, where we go to worship. Um, and what that means is by describing it that way, is saying that it's something that is a gift, that should be respected uh, and watched over. As a doctor um, practicing within the UK, if I wasn't a member of the church, I would certainly be teaching and talking to my patients about living the word of wisdom. To avoid alcohol, to avoid tobacco, to eat meat sparingly, to have a good, balanced, nutritious diet, to exercise, to uh, get up early, to sleep well, all of those kind of things are now full of evidence that they contribute to a healthier lifestyle. And if everybody in the world didn't smoke and didn't drink, we would have a much healthier world, a much healthier nation, um, and there'd be more money in the health service as well to be able to provide care and attention and treatments for those other patients who've got diseases that aren't related to alcohol and smoking. One of the interesting things of the, of the Word of Wisdom, again, is the commandment to abstain from alcohol, considered to be a very normal and safe drink at the time. But obviously, over the period of the last 170 years or so, we've discovered that alcohol is not only a drug of addiction, but a major cause of illness within, within the UK. But the greater impact of alcohol is not just the physical effects, but also the social, the economical, and the emotional impacts that it can have on individuals, on their families, and those that love them. The cost of alcohol impacting us on our society is almost immeasurable. I think in this country, you know, we, we, we're told that um, the National Health Service spends about three billion pounds just through the cost of alcohol, and that tobacco is estimated to cost the service another two to five billion pounds. Um, I'm also informed that uh, you know, over 80,000 people die in this country alone as a result of the use uh, of tobacco. Some of the health complications that I saw as a nurse, uh, particularly I think related to smoking, where we had lots of patients with appalling circulation problems. And I nursed quite a few patients who'd had amputations due to their smoking because their circulation to their feet just wasn't sufficient to maintain the tissues. And I also nursed patients who had severe diseases of their livers and pancreas because of the high alcohol that they were drinking. I think one of the uh, amazing things of the Word of Wisdom, of course, which was given in the early 1830s, was the command to stay away from hot drinks defined as tea and coffee. Now, these two drinks do contain chemicals or drugs which are or can be addictive. Uh, they can cause harm to the body, for example, they contain heart stimulants, they contain chemicals that would not be advised as a general use within, you, within your life. And therefore, by abstaining from these drinks, we again don't take into our bodies things which regularly contain chemicals which actually can be quite harmful. Many of us have challenges or addictions that we might be dealing with. It might be alcohol, uh, it might be tobacco, it might be pornography or some other challenge. The church actually has addiction recovery programs. Uh, we have groups that meet in our buildings, often weekly, to help those individuals who are doing battle with those addictions. There are numerous studies now that have looked at Latter-day Saint uh, populations, and what they've found is that the life expectancy among those who are living the Word of Wisdom 
can be anywhere up to five or even seven years longer than an equivalent population who are not living the word of wisdom. Even if you take smoking out of that, which of course is a major cause of both illness and, and death, it can still increase your lifespan by three to five years.